Hey, what's up guys? Today we're gonna talk about how to stencil the weld to where you can tell who welded it, what side, what pass, who's responsible for the weld, things like that. But first, we gotta make a weld. For those of you who may not know, my name's Austin Ross, pipeline welder for seven years now. Here on this channel, I share tips and tricks for rig welders, pipeliners, and the pipeline lifestyle. If those are videos that you're interested in, make sure and subscribe and ring the bell to get notified when I post a new video every Friday. Before I get started, I wanted to share with you what I've been doing all week. If you don't get my newsletter, or you're not on my email list, or and you're not on my email list, you may not know that I've been doing five days of Christmas. Five days, five different deals, and five dollars shipping. Today's deal, we're doing 25% off of all my services that I offer on my website. If you go to my website, arosswelding.com, you can find services that I offer now. A few of them are a one-on-one -on -one phone call, a, a video call, or a detailed email along with a couple of other things, but we're offering 25% off of those things. Last but not least, I'm also offering 25% off of the Aros Welding Inner Circle. If you don't know what the Inner Circle is, you can go to my website, aroswelding.com, under the Join My Inner Circle tab to read more about the Inner Circle. The Inner Circle is a network that we have created for rig welders, small business owners, future pipeline welders, future rig welders, the families of these folks, it's a place you can go to get advice, to get help, to um, just network with people that are just like you and I, wanting to get in or already in the pipeline welding industry. The inner circle is normally $349.99 for the year and $34.99 per month. With the 25% discount, it's gonna be $259.99 for the year or $25.99 for the month. We are offering this deal through Sunday, December 22nd until midnight. So hurry on over if you're interested. All right, let's cut some pipe. This is what we've got. Got a hand bevel. For those of you that have seen the video on how to bevel pipe without a beveling machine, this is the one that I hand beveled. But I'm gonna make a bevel with the beveling machine here, flip it around, and then make a weld right there, and then show y'all how we stencil it. There you have it. it. Took me all night to make that weld. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's the next day. All right, so every pipeline job that we go on, every welder gets a stencil. That may be a letter of the alphabet, a number, combination of the two. Sometimes it's only your initials plus the last four your social. Either way, your stencil is connected to your social one way or another. That's where it goes back to and that's what it's connected to because they need to know who made that weld. Not only is it documented who made the weld, you've got x-ray numbers that are on there, heat numbers, the length of the pipe, I think are some of the uh, the main things that I know of that are written, you know, right around the weld or at the end of the piece of pipe. Or all this information is wrote on the pipe, but it's also, it's taken down by inspectors in a booklet. There are several people that write almost the same information down just so it's documented documented several times. You got inspector that writes it down, a welding inspector that writes it down, coding inspector, utility inspector, any inspector that's on the job, fabrication or mainline, they all write these numbers down. They write down all this stuff, they all write it down in their book to keep track of information about that weld and who made that weld. If you can't tell already, it's very important to document all this information about this weld. Some pipeline jobs are, especially like your bigger projects going across country, DOT as in Department of Transportation, transporting oil or natural gas a long distance. They have to be DOT regulated, which means everybody that works on that job has to take a drug test. Um, and I was kind of like, what's a DOT job, you know, before I was filming this video, so I looked it up, like what does DOT stand for? And the one thing that I want to point out is who is required to get DOT drug tests. It says anyone designated in DOT regulations as a safety sensitive employee is subject to DOT drug and alcohol testing. A safety sensitive employee is someone who holds a job that can impact both their own safety and the safety of the public. 
So it goes on to say Federal Aviation Administration, Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, U.S. Coast Guard, and then here's where we come up, Pipeline and Hazardous Materials. Whenever we're laying a pipeline, we go by houses through town sometimes. I've never been on a job that goes through town, but pipelines do go through towns. Uh, pipelines usually five or six foot beneath the ground. Uh, you know, farmland, it, the residential, you know, that's the safety of the residents. But like anywhere, anywhere this pipeline, if something happens to it, it could it could injure people. You know, it could injure they could just injure somebody or something, and it's not it's not good. So that's why us welders have to test before every job because you have to know what you're doing if you're going to weld on this DOT pipeline. You have to know how to make a quality weld. That's why it's so important that everything is documented, documented by several people. So who is responsible for a bad weld or a bad piece of pipe or, you know, a leak on a pipeline or whatever? Let me just start from the beginning. Okay, so on new construction, the pipe has to be in great condition to start with. I'm pretty sure they inspect the pipe whenever they get it from the factory to the stockpile. I don't know that for certain, but I know like once it gets out to the job, the people that string the pipe have to be careful with it. Can't have no dents, no divots in it, or if there are divots, they have a tolerance, you know, it can't be too deep of a divot. Um, and different jobs have different, and different sizes of pipe have different tolerances. But through the whole process, from the time the pipe gets to the right of way till it gets in the ground, it's inspected several times. And so there's several different steps to make sure the pipe is fine and it's good pipe. And then once the welders make the weld, the inspector, well, the inspector looks at the weld, make sure the visual is good and then x-ray will shoot every weld on a DOT job. So as you can see, there's several processes of making sure this weld is absolutely quality. Now, as long as everybody's done their job the best they can, if the welder, if you've done your job the best that you can, x-ray is gonna shoot it, and if there's not anything wrong with it, then the welder technically is in the clear. But then once x-ray shoots it, that's like, that's the main deal, the weld should be good. And then they put pipe dope on it. And then once the whole pipeline is tied in, they will hydro test it. They will put water up to a certain pressure. It's got to hold a certain amount of pressure. And then they can essentially, in a nutshell, they can put gas to it after they clean it out with pigs and whatnot. Several different processes for different lines, for different sizes of lines. But I mean, that's, that's the gist of it. They do several different precautions and tests to make sure this line is not going to leak. Sure, they even put test leads every so often, which test leads are just wires that they put on the pipe to test the pipe. You know, they might come back in six months or a year or two years. I don't know how often they check this, but they'll go to the spot, you know, that'll be up out of the ground, take the reading on this pipe to see that what the thickness is, if it's eroding anywhere. They actually put, nowadays they put, uh, I don't know how long, how long they've been doing it. If you know, comment below. But they put, I think it's called zinc in the ground along a certain amount of distance away from the pipe. I don't know if it's above the side or under, but around the pipe somewhere, they put zinc in there. That way, that is, I'm pretty sure zinc attracts the uh, corrosion. So it'll eat away the zinc before it eats away the pipe. So as you can see, they do several different precautions when it comes to pipeline work. And so the answer to who is responsible, the truth is, I don't know past me, the welder. The welder is responsible for the weld that they're making. And the way that we keep track of that is through a stencil. Whenever I say stencil, I don't mean the cutout letters that you used in grade school and like, you know, painted through or spray painted through to make the perfect letters. We literally just use a marker and we mark next to the weld who made the weld, you know, by using whatever you were assigned, your initials, your last four, your social number, letter of the outfit. We write that next to the weld to document who made the weld, who made which part of the weld, and that's how that works. Now let's get into showing you how to make a stencil. This is going to be helpful for helpers because on helpers, if you're on a fabrication job, you will write the stencil, write who made the weld, and then you want to transfer the heat numbers from the pipe that you cut your pup off of. You want to transfer that heat number off of that piece of pipe onto the pup. I don't have heat numbers here, but I do have a weld that I've made and I will show you how to stencil the weld. And depending on whether you are on fabrication or mainline it will depend on if you need this whole house this is like a mainline situation you know you got your bead hands hot pass hands and then usually depending on the thickness of pipe you got your firing line back here so the same initials might be in 
these two boxes. But so we'll just do main line first. Say uh, A is running beads. A and B is running beads. And this is 12 inch or bigger. 12 inch or bigger, you're gonna have, you're gonna be brother-in-law usually, especially on the first two passes. And then let's say we got, uh, just for simplicity, we've got C and D hot passing. And then back here on the firing line, we've got the same guy that made this weld. Uh, it's gonna be E capped this, filled and capped this weld. So that is how you stencil. And you can even, you know, you got bead, hot pass, hot fill, and cap. So that's how you stencil a mainline weld. If it's a smaller, like let's go back here, say this is our weld. If it's a smaller piece of pipe, smaller than 12 inch, and you made it by yourself, you just point to it and put, uh, say where A done this right here. Just point at it, you can put A back here, whatever you wanna do. The whole weld, here's another example. If it's smaller pipe, but you're on main line, you would do something like this. It wouldn't have a, you know, you got A that ran the bead, you got B that hot passed it, and then you got C that capped it. So see, it's smaller pipe, so you didn't brother in all. That means this person made the weld all the way around, not just half of it. That's why you draw it right here on top where the button is, because from here over, B made this weld, and from here over, A made this weld. That's how you do main line. This is how you do fabrication, unless, not very often, but some fabrication jobs, you will have welders that are just putting bead and hot pass, and then you have welders coming in and capping the welds. But that is how you stencil a weld. An extra bonus tip is make sure you don't put the stencil too close to the weld. Now this depends on the inspector, but a lot of times they'll want you to put the stencil back here a good, they all have different preferences, but further away than that, because whenever they sandblast and coat this weld, they'll get dope right here and they don't want you to cover up the stencil. They wanna be able to see that until the pipe is in the ground. Just keeping in mind, try to keep your stencil, I'm gonna say a good 10, 12 inches off the weld, um, if not more, depending on the size of the pipe and depending on the inspector. All right, there you have it. That is how you stencil weld and some information on what goes into the documentation process out on pipeline job. My piece of advice for this week goes to the new helper and somebody that might've clicked on this video in hopes of uh, learning more about the pipeline construction process. To the new helper, my advice is be ahead of the game. Stencil the weld, know what the welder stencil is before you ever get out there to make weld and stencil it before he or she has to tell you to do so. That's gonna help you a bunch. And then to the person who might have clicked on this that is wanting to know more about the construction process, don't believe everything you hear in mainstream media, everything you read on the internet or watch including what I say. I mean, I'm just one person. I don't know everything. But if you're here, chances are you are doing your research and I can appreciate that. But do your research. Take it from people that are out there in the trenches. Don't forget about my sale that's going on 25% off of all my services from now until the end of the weekend, December 22nd at midnight and 25% off of my inner circle. Thank you for watching this video and remember, learn something every day.